Before we get into the witness interference case of Mose Feltner, we need to back up a few years to travel to Perry County, April 1900. The French Eversole feud was in full swing. Jesse Fields was one of the men who was accused of killing Judge Combs and Joe Eversole. He had been arrested, and before he went to trial, he was killed by Mose Feltner. This is very important information in this case, as it seems that the French Eversold feud of Perry County and the Hargis feuds of Breathitt County were linked by more than one event. Come along with us as we explore the death of Jesse Fields and what price, if any, would be paid for the murder. All aboard the Kentucky Tennessee Living Time Machine. Please fasten your seatbelts and keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times. But to get going, we need your help. We still need to fire up that time machine to transport us. Please help us by clicking on the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons down below. Not only does this fire up the time machine, but it convinces YouTube that we need a bigger time machine to reach more people who love history as much as you do. Now, back to our story. Who was Jesse Fields? According to the website Find a Grave, Jesse Fields was born on December 1, 1857 on Browns Fork, Perry County, Kentucky. He was the son of Henry H. Fields and Louisa Combs Fields. Jesse was married to Elizabeth Hurt Couch and Sally Ann Couch Fields. He would have four children, Robert Henry, Margaret Fields Merle, Napoleon, and Mary Fields Pittman. Fields would be accused of the murders of Joseph Eversole and Judge Combs in Perry County. However, before Jesse Fields could go to court to prove his innocence or guilt in the matter, he was shot and killed. For more information about Jesse Fields and his participation in the French Eversole feud, please refer to our video, The Complete French and Eversole Feud. The Death of Jesse Fields Jesse would be killed on April 19, 1900 at the age of 42 years old in Breathitt County. The man accused of killing him was Moses B. Feltner. So, what happened there? The French and Hargis factions were working for the same side, it seems. Both sides were even named as defendants in the Markham Damage case. So, why would a man from the Hargis faction kill a man from the French faction? So let's walk through what the newspapers of the day say that happened that led to the death of Jesse Fields. Several newspapers of the day reported the same article. Some of them that we were able to find include the Daily Public Ledger, April 27, 1900, the Hickman Courier, May 4, 1900, and the Owingsville Outlook, May 2, 1900. Quote, The Commonwealth, Jesse Fields Killed. One of the leaders in the French Eversold feud shot from his horse. Jackson, Kentucky, April 27th. Jesse Fields, one of the most noted of all the mountain feudal fighters in Kentucky, died from the effects of a pistol shot wound. Fields was one of the leaders in the famous French Eversold feud. The shooting of Fields occurred at a blind tiger 16 miles from this place. A difficulty arose between Jesse Fields and Farmer Gilbert. Both quickly drew revolvers and began firing. Fields got behind the fence and Gilbert shielded himself with a convenient mulberry tree and the trouble proceeded uninterruptedly until the weapons of both men were empty. Neither man had been hurt and they subsequently made friends. A little later in the evening, Fields bade all present goodbye and got upon his horse to go home. As he started to ride off, it is charged, two shots were fired and French's trusted man fell from his horse, mortally wounded. It is asserted that both Gilbert and Feltner, one of Gilbert's friends, fired simultaneously at Fields, though it is not known which killed him. Gilbert and Feltner have disappeared, unquote. It seems that Fields did not die immediately, and there was a motive behind the murder. According to the Find a Grave web source, quote, Jesse Fields dead. Jesse Fields was shot Tuesday near Jackson by Mose Feltner and died from the effects of the wound Thursday. Fields had loaned Feltner $120 and the difficulty arose over his trying to collect it. He, Fields, was one of the worst men in the mountains and one of the principals in the French Eversold feud. 
he was tried for murder of Judge Combs, Jesse's uncle of Hazard. A few years ago, at that time of his death, he was under indictment for the murder near Jackson recently. Unquote. The Winchester Democrat, Tuesday, May 1st, 1900. Unquote. So, was this really a dispute over a loan? There are so many unanswered questions about this, if that was true. Why didn't Mose Feltner go to Jesse Fields to borrow $120? As of the first week of February 2024, the $120 in 1900 would be worth $4,382.09. What did Feltner use the money for? Did he intend to pay back the money? Or was it used as an excuse to kill Fields? Was Fields a marked man because he was accused of killing his own uncle? Was there something that the French faction of the French ever so viewed was afraid that Fields was going to expose during court, and so they had the man from Hargis faction to dispose of the problem? There are just a few of these questions that will never be answered because there is not enough evidence to discover a true motive if the loan was not the reason behind the crime. How Feltner was caught there are some reports that Feltner was not injured during the shooting of Fields. However, we did find a report that he was indeed wounded, and this led to his being found for the crime. According to the Mount Vernon Signal, May 4, 1900, quote, Deputy Sheriff Thomas Houchel, after searching two days for Moses Feltner, who killed Jesse Fields in Breathitt County, finally landed his man in Leslie County, but found that Feltner was so badly wounded from a shot in the leg, supposed to have been fired by Fields, unquote. Now, we have Hounshell finding Feltner in Leslie County, but even though he found him, the article does not say that he was arrested during that time, which was very curious. Was Feltner wounded so badly in the shooting that he was unable to move out of his sick bed? that this led to a reward being offered by the Kentucky State Governor in his later arrest? According to the Mount Vernon Signal, June 29, 1900, quote, Moses Feltner, who killed Jesse Fields the feudist a few months ago, was captured in Knott County by Deputy Sheriff Sherman Cope and lodged in jail at Jackson. Governor Beckham had offered a $300 reward for his capture, unquote. Now, while we could not find documentation about what happened to Feltner during this time, we will discover in an article a little later in this video where Feltner went to trial, was found guilty, and spent a year in prison for this crime. He would be released after a year by the help of attorney J.B. Markham. More legal troubles. But his legal troubles over this murder would not end there. He would be rearrested on a bench warrant for the same crime. According to the testimony of his mother, Rebecca Bailey, that B.F. French and Ed Callahan would help him out of trouble if he were to do as they asked. Keeping that promise in mind, this is what happened in October of 1904 in the court of Judge Hargis. According to the Daily Public Ledger, October 11, 1904, quote, Mose Feltner, charged with the murder of Jesse Fields, was arrested on a bench warrant at Jackson but was released by Judge Hargis after having been arrested at Winchester previously on the same charge and released on bond. He had five pistols on his person when arrested, unquote. We could not find an actual play-by-play -play concerning the trial of Feltner concerning this case. It was most likely due to the fact that the Markham Damage case and several other criminal trials were also taking place during this exact same time. We can suppose that some of these witnesses that testified to the other cases were also lending their voices to this trial, but we cannot say for certain. All we have found so far is this article concerning the case. However, Feltner's trial was moved to another court, to Irvine, Kentucky. We can only suppose that it is because of the Markham Damage case that had exposed so much corruption in Breathitt County in December of 1904 through 1905 that Judge Hargis could not try any cases that fell under the umbrella of the feud anymore. According to the Breathitt County News, December 22, 1905, quote, Mose Feltner on trial at Irvine. The case against Mose Feltner, charged with the murder of Jesse Fields, came up for trial at Irvine on last Tuesday. 
The jury was made up on Wednesday, and Robert Fields, brother of Jesse, was the first witness introduced. This case was tried here in 1901, and Feltner was given a year in the penitentiary, but the case was appealed by the late J.B. Markham to the Court of Appeal and reversed. The case was taken to Irvine on a change of venue. Several witnesses from this country are in attendance. Unquote. Evidently, the trial did not last very long because the jury would come back with a verdict just seven days later. According to the Interior Journal, December 29, 1905, quote, The jury at Irvine in the case of Moses B. Feltner, charged with the murder of Jesse Fields, returned a verdict of not guilty, unquote. So, even though the first jury had found him guilty of the killing of Jesse Fields, the second jury would acquit him. Questions without answers. Now, let's think about this for just a minute. You have Fields, who was working for the French side of the French Eversole feud. You had Feltner, who was working for the Hargis side of their feud. Hargis and French were thick as thieves and would even be attorneys for each other. So, why didn't the shooting of Fields cause a rift between the two factions? And why did the two sides continue to use Feltner in their plans? Something else to think about is the trial of Moses B. Feltner for the murder of Jesse Fields that took place during the same time as the Markham Damage case. Did one trial influence the other trial? Was Feltner forthcoming with his information in the deposition of the Markham case because of the trials that he would have to face? When the verdict of not guilty was given for the murder trial, court dates and trials would still be in Feltner's future. But the biggest question of all was this, did Feltner get away with the murder of Jesse Fields? In next week's video, we will cover the jury tampering trial and other charges brought against Feltner and their verdicts. Thank you. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian Feuds. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notifications. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries in Appalachian history.